Good morning. So it is Sunday morning. Yesterday, we cleaned out all the bin bottoms of all our tens and 12,000 bushel bins. Today I got a couple bags to make and then as soon as the dew is off the grass we're going to put the pickup on the combine, the pickup header, and go pick up the swaths that I swathed a few days ago. Then uh, depending on how they look we're going to take the straight cut header and go pick up some more. We expect we're probably going to have to keep drying the oats, that's okay though, uh, oats are pretty easy to dry. And then we're gonna set up into a big 10,000 bushel bin so we can, uh, don't have to move a whole bunch. Good afternoon. So we, uh, I got my bags made this morning, loaded out some molasses. We also, we got our swing down here. Dad went up to get the grain back tractor, hook it back up to the grain dryer. And uh, we are gonna go ahead and combine some oats. I got a sample here. Corey just filled up this tandem. She's doing the outside rounds that I had swathed the other day. The rest is standing, so we'll use our other combine because the uh, baler man wants to bale it and it's easier to bale behind a walker combine than it is a rotary combine. And we're not going to go too hard at it today. Uh, unfortunately, that wind, it's not wanted because I swath my peas and canola mix. And uh, even with the 35 foot swather, it, it, was, it, was a, it, it's a, it was a bad crop. So. It didn't leave a big enough swath and it is actually starting to blow off the field now. <clears throat> Our canola swath, it's starting to fluff up a bit, but that's, uh, it's, it's not moving yet. Where our, my mom, when she was coming out, she said that the, the swath actually rolled right across the field. So <sighs> that's uh, part of the, there was one guy that was watching him, he, he joked about it, said where he farms, if they swath their canola, they can may as well just pick it up in the next county. Uh, yeah, that, that does happen for sure. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's happening here right now. So what were our options? Huh, I don't know. We could have desiccated it. The fact that we seeded the peas and canola together, the canola was, was really immature. So it wasn't ready for desiccation at all. The peas were quite ripe. If we would have left them stand in this wind, the peas probably would have shelled out anyways because the wind was blowing so hard. Uh, so, the, you know, the, that wasn't really an option. If we would have left them stand this long, by the time we got to swath them now, you would have had a bunch more header loss. So we took the chance to just swath it. If it was a really good crop and it made a really big swath, it probably wouldn't, it wouldn't blow away so bad, but it's so light and fluffy that it's just blowing away. Uh, the particular field she was at, that was mostly weeds anyways. So I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the oats here right now. Same as I did with my wheat harvest video. Uh, you check moisture in the grains the same way. So let's get at it. First of all, turn this to calibrate, find this guy to the red line. This needle's all the way to the left. Get our scooper thing on there. We need 200 grams of oats. Zero this. Do a quick 24 degrees, fire that in here. All right, switch this to operate, drop your sample. Now we gotta go all the way till this red line gets back to the left. Red needle, I guess, orange, whatever color you wanna call it. Okay, so right about there. Number on here is, it's always how you look at it, but let's call it 12 maybe. Oops, we'll call it 12. All right, so we come over here to our little chart, 24 degrees and 12. That's canola, okay, oats. So we got 24 degrees. Is this line by the ruler here? We go down and find 12. So it's telling us these oats are 13.1. 13.5 is dry. We are a bit skeptical of that because of the green ones. 
so we're gonna run it through the dryer anyways. We don't have enough aeration bins to to do that, to air it down and everything else. And with as long as we keep grain for, it's just not worth the risk. On our farm, it's no secret if you've been watching, the women do the combining, they're better at it, they're more patient, uh, and the work in the yard is a lot more physical. We got just a 580 bushel batch dryer, so that needs a lot of attention. Um, unloading trucks is dusty. It's windy, you're outside, it's cold, it sucks, it's miserable. So, but setting the combines, we definitely try to make sure that they're set before they go to the field because that's not a fun job either. When you climb in the back and you have all that stuff blown in your face. And, and uh, even just the whole combine setting process where you're in and out 25 times to uh, make sure you're not losing anything. So I'm gonna take uh, mother's combine out right now and go ahead and get it set. And then by that time, my dad is lost. So we lost him altogether. Mom dropped him off to get that grain back tractor. And then she went back up there and he was totally gone. Not even on the farm anymore. So her and the kids are in the side by side driving around looking for him. Hopefully they find him or else we will have a job opening, I guess, for a grain dryer operator. All right, so these older combines, uh, they give you this rough chart, right, to set for what you're doing. Maybe the new ones do too, I don't know. As far as I understood, the new ones set themselves, but uh, these ones don't. So we always kind of start with their basic settings and then go from there. The uh, cylinder, the concave, and the fan RPM you do in the cab here, the chaffer, the extension, and the sieve, and the pre-cleaner you would do outside. Uh, those ones are already done, so let's get going. I definitely have a lot of appreciation for what uh, the older generations in ag did from uh, you know from having the uh, the energy to break this land clear this land put this land into production and then and then farm it through all the bad times but on days like today when you look at that oat chaff blowing around holy smokes if you didn't have a cap I don't know if you'd be able to survive my dad said that, yeah, that used to be be just crazy because you'd, you'd, you'd wrap yourself all up and then in the fall, the wasps up here, they get bad. Uh, so you'd be swathing or combining and you'd be wrapped right tight to keep the chaff off your face and your neck. And uh, that wasp would get in there and start stinging you. Uh, so my, my mom told me stories about that when she was swathing and stuff like that. And so did my dad. So I had just stopped there in the middle of the field and uh, shut everything down. There's really no better way to check if you're uh, check for losses uh, than than to do that. You know, halfway down the field, just shut things down and get out and have a look. I think it looks pretty good. We are dropping the straw, so it's all concentrated in this swath. So really, that's all you got to do is kind of rifle through there and see if you can see any seeds. There's the odd one, the green one or whatever, and our combines aren't big capacity machines and they don't have the large uh, cleaning capacity like the new ones do. So we're okay with a little bit of uh, a little bit of loss, I guess. And then the baler man, he's gonna bale it up. So most of that he'll pick up in his bale if there is any, if there is any. We don't see a whole bunch. Uh, like see, there's a little bit. So here, when you just check in a swath, you won't really be able to tell how much is header loss and there is going to be a certain amount of that regardless so the only way to make sure you're not getting header loss is to stop you know in the middle of, of a swath and then go back and look behind the combine because you know you haven't got to the header spot yet 